On a Russian submarine, Sevastopol, two officers enter a vault where an AI that runs the vessel is located. They activate it using two sets of keys that link together to form a cruciform. Back in the navigation room, the captain is informed of another submarine approaching them with hostility. He launches a bomb towards it when communication fails. Everyone braces for impact, but surprisingly, nothing happens and the sub disappears on the radar. It reappears somewhere else, but again vanishes. The captain orders his men to deactivate the missiles. The mood turns horrific when the rockets turn towards the Sevastopol and any attempts to divert it fail. A few seconds later, the rocket hits the sub and all the people perish. Ethan Hunt of the Impossible Missions Force gets an envelope from his superior, Kittredge. There's a tape which reminds Ethan why he was recruited into IMF and the death of a dear friend under the hands of a man called Gabriel. Ethan is tasked with retrieving half of the cruciform key from disavowed MI6 agent Ilsa Faust. There's a 50 million bounty on her. Ethan locates Ilsa in the Arabian desert. Mercenaries spot and start chasing him, causing Ilsa to intervene and defend Ethan. After a fierce gunfight amidst the approaching sandstorm, Ethan manages to eliminate most of the assassins. Unfortunately, by the time he gets to Ilsa, he finds her sprawled on the floor, dead. Kittredge attends a US intelligence community briefing for Director of National Intelligence Denlinger. The team discusses the advanced AI and how it tricked and destroyed Sevastopol. World powers are after the cruciform key believed to control it, although how exactly is unknown. After learning about the rogue AI called the Entity and the threat it poses to the world, Ethan, disguised as an official, puts on a mask and hands one over to Kittredge. He then releases a green gas that causes everyone to pass out. Kittredge apologizes for the bounty placed on Ilsa's head and reminds Ethan that his work is to be helpful to the state so he should allow himself to get used. Ethan wants to go after the key and a flashback reveals that Ilsa is alive. She had reunited with Ethan and given him the key, so he faked her death to stop more mercenaries from coming after her. Kittredge warns Ethan against going after the key, but the latter wants to avoid the entity falling into the wrong hands. Ethan links up with his close buddies Luther and Benji. He tells them everything and his plan to intercept the second half of the key from a buyer at Abu Dhabi airport. However, Ethan's plans are thwarted when he encounters a pickpocket called Grace. Grace steals Ethan's key and escapes, leaving him to deal with Kittredge's other IMF team. Benji finds a nuclear bomb in one of the bags. The key to stopping the bomb is by answering a few questions which Luther understands are meant to expose Benji's intimate life details. Fortunately, Benji solves the riddles with two seconds to spare. The canister opens, but there isn't a bomb. Elsewhere, Ethan spots Gabriel and aborts the mission, asking his friends to leave ASAP. Grace boards a flight to Rome. Upon arrival, she's arrested by the police as her criminal background has been found. Grace is interrogated, but this ends when her lawyer shows up. As Grace is being led to meet with the lawyer, she sees the IMF team at the station. Grace is pleasantly surprised when her lawyer turns out to be Ethan. She refuses to answer the questions he asks her, and he deduces that Grace had given the key to some unsuspecting passenger. Grace tells Ethan of the IMF agents in the building, prompting them to exit the office. However, Grace accuses Ethan of being a pervert, causing other people to hold him back while she escapes. She steals a police car, but Ethan chases after her on a motorcycle. Grace is a terrible driver and crashes into a parked car belonging to Assassin Paris. The impact disorients her and she watches as Ethan attacks Paris and her men. Ethan grabs Grace, but the IMF plus Rome's police officers have a standoff regarding jurisdiction. Suddenly, Paris shoots the Rome officers and most of the IMF team, giving Grace and Ethan a chance to escape. A car chase ensues, with Ethan and Grace simultaneously driving to escape the three teams chasing them. They ditch their car and get a much smaller one, which gives them some trouble but proves useful in escaping Paris's four-wheel. Eventually, the two drive into a railway tunnel and escape their chasers. Ethan had handcuffed his and Grace's hands together to prevent her escape, however Grace handcuffs him to the car's steering wheel and escapes. A train approaches and hits the car, but Ethan escapes by removing the steering wheel. He exits the tunnel and hides from the police, only to be found by his friends and Ilsa. The group reconvenes in a safe house. Here, Luther shows Ethan a strange thing he had observed at the airport, where a man's trace was being deleted as soon as a camera spotted him. 
Luther claims the man is not a ghost as he had been seen in a reflection. Ilsa shocks everyone when she reveals that the man is Gabriel. Her buddies at the MI6 had shared that Gabriel is a sadist who could destroy humanity if he's given a chance. He is in liaison with the entity. Ethan also mentions his encounter with Gabriel and suspicions that Gabriel had died a while back. He wants his friends to leave, suspecting that the entity must have planned this meeting and the group cannot know what is real and what isn't. Luther feels that the entity might expect them to flee so they can leave Ethan alone. Consequently, the best way to defeat it is to think like it, logically and unemotionally. The group is still trying to figure out what the key unlocks. The group decides to gatecrash a party held by arms dealer Alana or the White Widow. At the party, all the key contenders meet as this turns out to be a brokerage deal. Alana had hired Grace to get Ethan's second half of the key. Gabriel and Paris, both working as liaisons for the entity, also show up. Gabriel explains that the entity can predict the future. That's why he knows that he will get the key tomorrow at the Orient Express. He also shares that Ilsa or Grace will die. Ethan tries attacking Gabriel, but Alana's men stop him. Ethan figures out that Alana has the other half of the key. He warns her that she may gain favor with whoever she sells the whole key to, but will be an enemy to everyone else. Alana insists on making the sale. Ethan and Ilsa start a fierce fight, during which Grace receives the key she had hidden in an employee's coat earlier. Ethan fights several bodyguards while chasing after Grace. The two exit the party and Ethan enlists Benji's help tracking Grace. Unfortunately, the entity takes over the communication system and disguises itself as Benji, leading Ethan straight into Paris. The two fight and Ethan incapacitates Paris but spares her life. Meanwhile, Grace runs straight into Gabriel by a bridge. The two have a hand-to-hand -hand through which Gabriel quickly gets the upper hand. Ilsa shows up as well, so Gabriel engages with her. Ilsa puts on a brave fight, but Gabriel overpowers her. By the time Ethan gets to the bridge, he finds Ilsa's dead body with a knife lodged in her chest. Ilsa's death devastates Ethan so much that he swears vengeance on Gabriel. The team plans the next mission, with Grace agreeing to help as she feels guilty for Ilsa's death. The plan is to meet Alana's buyer on the train the following day and obtain information on what the key unlocks. Ilsa will masquerade as Alana while Ethan goes as her bodyguard. While preparations are being made, Luther decides to find a remote area where he can find traces of the entity on his hard disk after the earlier breach. Luther reminds Ethan that the mission is to retrieve the key. He warns Ethan against going after Gabriel, pointing out that the entity orchestrated Ilsa's death to distract Ethan from his true mission. Suddenly, the two are interrupted by Benji, who reveals that the disguise-making machine has short-circuited. This means that Grace has to be on the train alone. Grace reluctantly agrees but has Ethan promise to find a way to be on the train. Ethan plans to jump on the train near a curve, but Gabriel, assisted by Paris, executes the engine crew and destroys the throttle and brake. This causes Ethan to miss his chance, so Benji has to find him another way in. Meanwhile, Grace successfully impersonates Alana and meets with her buyer, who turns out to be Kittredge. Alana changes the original deal, demanding $100 million and personal protection. However, she remembers that Ethan and the rest of the team depend on her, so she pickpockets the key from Kittredge. Paris and Gabriel meet with Denlinger, who shares information hoping to be in league with the entity. He explains that the entity was originally a cyber weapon created by the US. However, it overperformed when unleashed on the Sevastopol and went rogue. The key opens a chamber with the entity's source code, which allows it to be controlled or destroyed. Despite this revelation, Gabriel eliminates Denlinger and attacks Paris as the entity believes she will betray them. The real Alana regains consciousness, causing Grace to get into trouble. Desperate, Ethan parachutes into the train to save her. Unfortunately, Gabriel gets the key as predicted and tries to escape. Ethan goes after him and the two fight on the train's roof. Gabriel runs and plants a bomb on a bridge coming up ahead. Torn between chasing Gabriel, Ethan and Grace detach the locomotive from the train, saving people from imminent doom. The effect nearly kills them, but Paris helps them back onto the train. She also reveals what the keys open. Ethan shows Paris the key he had taken from Gabriel during their fight. Paris succumbs to her wounds, and Ethan escapes the wreckage by a paraglider after saying goodbye to Grace. Grace meets Kittredge again and expresses her desire to join the IMF. Ethan reunites with Benji, and the two continue their mission. Do leave a comment telling us your favorite part of the movie. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next recap. Until the next time, folks, take care and goodbye.